So we're getting a lot of questions in the chat and then we'll go to our local supporters about Eastern priests being married and why that's a thing. Yeah. You've probably never been asked that before. Never, but. never, actually never. <laughs> so uh, people have to distinguish between discipline and, and doctrine. And uh, the issue of celibacy and married priesthood is not an issue of doctrine. It's an issue of uh, discipline. Disciplines can come and go. Doctrines, despite what the German bishops may tell us, doctrines cannot change. Um, and uh, so that that's it. This is an issue of discipline. And we see that this discipline um, has been consistently used, uh, you know, practiced in the East uh, from the very beginning. And some of the big, biggest proponents of it um, were church fathers. You know, you have Clement who uh, uh, writes uh, against two heretic, heretical movements um, in the uh, the end of the f beginning of the second century, um, around before 108. And uh, he says very simply that, you know, there are two heretical movements here. One is, uh, you know, the, the people who are uh, licentious mm -hmm. and very lax and people who are the of the hyper ascetical movement and the people who are of the hyper ascetical movement wanted to say that, um, you know, they wanted to raise the issue of celibacy to a, a doctrinal point and to say that those clergy who were not celibate were, were, were heretics. And Clement wrote back and says that, you know, look at Peter. Peter was married. Look at, at St. Philip. You know, Philip had daughters. Um, and then, uh, so that's that's from the the apostolic era or the sub-apostolic era. And then you can just look at, you know, the life of um, numerous, uh, you know, Gregory, St. Gregory of Nyssa. You know, he was he was married and uh, you know, became a widower, um, and numerous numerous saints uh, were uh, were, all, were likewise um, uh, uh, married clergy in the in the early church, and uh, I think Saint Basil, um, uh, I think Saint Basil's uh, father or Saint Gregory the theologian's father was was actually a bishop um, that he 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 brought back from uh, some some. Um, dangerous movements never but nevertheless you know uh his father was was a, a bishop and then by the by the, you know uh by the you know end of the fourth century beginning of the fifth century you know the the married episcopacy is you know is done away with but the the married priesthood is uh, that always stayed in the east um and in the west that's that's a, a different question um with with the councils specifically the councils of north africa but uh, this is not a doctrinal question. It's a it's a it's a, a matter of discipline. If it were a doctrinal question, then it, it gets back to where we started. Then why was Peter married? Why was you know Saint Philip married? Uh, Saint and Saint Paul speaks about this. You know that he, you know they all, the apostles have a right to take a wife, and he says I haven't. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, the others have, and there's there's nothing. And he extols the virtue of celibacy. Yeah, it, saying he's taken the better part. Right. So objectively. Wouldn't it, you say that celibacy is the better option for the priest? In one sense, I would, you know, because uh, I can tell you as a married priest that, you know, you're, you're, um, you are thinking about your wife and your family. And if you're not, then you're, you're not a very good husband and father, you know, and there's, there's a singularity mm. in uh, the celibate vocation, but, but I, you know, it's not to say that. <sighs> All people, just because you have been given a vocation as a priest, that ipso facto, therefore, you're also given the vocation uh, of celibacy. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, and on, the, on the flip side, though, you know, we have a, I won't say, the, we have an Eastern priest who's coming to Steubenville. The goal is that we're going to start a little Eastern Catholic church here. I won't give any more details away than that. But, you know, this is a person who's got a wife and a bunch of kids, and there's something to be said about a man who can keep his household in order <laughs> and be a, be a good husband to his wife and a good father to his children. Like, that, that's the makings also, of perhaps, for a good priest. Yeah, I think it's really helpful to the laity because uh, it provides women in the parish uh, an, an access point through the, the yimus, the wife of the priest. Mm -hmm. um, it also provides, you know, an example to the families that this is how, you know, kids are to be raised. This is how they're to be, be to behave. And that's that's one of the roles of a, of a priest's family in a parish is to be a, an example um, to the rest of the families. It's, it's a burden, but it's also a, a blessing. And for those at home, it's monks and bishops in the East are celibate. Yes. So the East has, I and mean, we have we have our faults. Don't don't let me mislead anyone thinking that we have no faults. But one of the blessings of the East is that they were always able, always able, to maintain that distinction between uh, the the monastic life and the clergy. 
so that you could be a married priest. Uh, they were called like the uh, the, the, the white clergy because their, their, their garbs were typically white or light gray. And the monks who always wore black, okay? I, I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but but uh, it's hard to find gray cassocks people. Um, the, the West, on the other hand, for reasons that would take longer to explain, the West collapsed uh, for the most part. The West collapsed the two into one so that, you know, the, 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 the layman in the desert, you know, the monk, the monos, that's what monk means. He's alone, the monos, the one, and the, the, the priest, uh, they become one. And uh, so therefore, the, the priest has to be uh, a celibate as the monks are. Um, so that, that's just kind of some history there of, uh, of how the East and West d evolved differently in that question. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Would you like this beautiful, very high quality, definitely not made in China, not that there's anything wrong with that, pints with Aquinas beer stein for free, sent to your door? Would you also like a copy of The Jill sent to your door four times a year? This is the Pints with Aquinas newspaper, by the way. If you do, go to mattfrad.locals.com and become an annual supporter for any amount. We'll send you that stuff for free and you get a bunch of other free things in return. You'll get more information by going over to mattfrad.locals.com. Thanks.